Professor Martin Curley is at Net Events, calling for governments, digital healthcare leaders, professionals and citizens to work together to avert a looming crisis in global healthcare. Martin, perhaps you could start by telling us a bit about you. Great, Julian. Well, uh, I'm Martin Curley. I'm an electronic engineer originally. I spent most of my career in the tech industry with Intel and Philips and GE and uh, MasterCard. But over the last five years, I've been working in healthcare. And I believe actually some of the insights that I gained working for tech firms are really applicable, applicable to healthcare transformation. Uh, so that's what I'm really focused on. And my mission is around driving a global digital transition for healthcare. Your call to arms is in a document called the Manhattan Manifesto. Perhaps you can tell us how that came about, who was involved, and what it is that you're asking for. Great. Well, we've made remarkable progress in the last 200 years through healthcare. We've more than doubled life expectancy for most people on the planet, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, but we're now at a stage where the old model is breaking down. We have demographic trends that are going in the wrong direction. We have you know, clinician attrition. We have full hospitals. So people are recognizing that we need to do something different. And there's a real opportunity to take digital technology, which is an exponential technology, apply it to healthcare, which is very information intensive, and actually reverse and bend, bend these curves. So I've been working with a bunch of global colleagues uh, <clears throat> through the United Nations Science Home and Digital Health Symposium. And we've come together, about 50 leaders, to try and create a global agenda that takes all the complexity of healthcare and makes it really simple. And we've come up with something called the Man Manhattan Manifesto. And the core of that is a very simple strategy we call Stay Left, Shift Left, 10x. Let me explain. Stay left's about using technology to keep well people well, or if you happen to have a chronic condition or need rehab, that you can be managed best of all from home. Shift left's about moving patients as quickly as possible from an acute to community to a home setting. And the last piece, 10x, is that we have witnessed and observed that when we deploy digital technology solutions with clinicians and patients, and we work with them to iterate these solutions. We're achieving outcomes that are 10 times better, 10 times faster, 10 times cheaper, 10 times higher volume. So we believe if there's a concerted effort globally around a common agenda, we can create a whole new kind of shared value, better welfare, better well-being, and indeed wealth, because health, we need to think about that not as an expense, but as an investment. COVID has accelerated the problems faced by the world's healthcare systems, but perhaps you can tell us why you think they were already in trouble before the pandemic and why you think we're now heading for a cliff edge. Well, I think COVID was actually really good for digital because it became a big bang disruptor uh, and we were able to you know, radically innovate very quickly. Like in Ireland, we had, within 48 hours, we had a remote monitoring solution for COVID-19 and similar solutions. But unfortunately, we've you know reverted to type. Now the threat of you know COVID has gone more or less away. You know we're back to the the old way of doing business. But if you look at every major indicator in terms of spending, like the, the U.S. is spending 20% of us or 20% of the U.S. GDP is on 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 healthcare, whereas you know GDP growth and your wages are growing nowhere near. So currently we have 50% of the world's population don't have access to adequate, adequate healthcare, and 50% that can afford it. If these trends continue, um, they won't be able to afford it. But access and availability, you know, we're seeing with, you know, we have a demographic time bomb. People are living longer, which is great, but they're getting older. And the system as it currently is designed just can't, um, you know, uh, deliver on that, so we have you know attrition of clinicians. There's burnout. People are not getting seen. People are you know are dying because A and E's are full. And digital is a very obvious answer to this. It's an exponential technology. Peter Diamandis said, when you digitize something, it starts to behave like an exponential technology. And there's a, a real opportunity to take this crisis, and you know people around the world are recognizing it. It's in the papers every day. Uh, we can do something about this, and it is accelerated deployment of digital solutions, keeping people in the home, keeping people well, and empowering patients to do most of their care themselves, because they're the people that are most invested in staying well. So that's the problem. Why do you believe digital transformation is the solution? 
Well, I've worked in semiconductor manufacturing for 25 years, and that's probably 10 times more information intensive than healthcare. And I saw how digital transformation transformed that business. When I joined Intel at Phoenix in 1992, Intel was misprocessing 3% of its wafers in its factories, and sometimes that cost a million dollars. We quickly developed a solution. You know, in less than six months, we eliminated uh, misprocessing of wafers. There's a similar problem in healthcare. Um, in Ireland alone, you know, we have you know, three million medication errors per year. That's one medication error per patient per day. And this is just a synchronization problem. So if we could do this in semiconductors 25 years ago, why can't we do it in healthcare today? And what will it take to make that happen, Martin? Well, the OECD say the number one thing we need is political will. This has to be a political decision. But the route that we're taking through the UN Digital Health Symposium, it's aligned with what Margaret Mead once said, you know, never doubt that a few committed individuals can change the world. In fact, it's the only thing that ever has. So we're trying to create a, a movement. We have these great organizations like the UN and the WHO, and they have great aspirations and they make progress, but we need to move much faster. This problem is coming at us so fast. Those institutions are more designed for stability rather than agility. So what we want to do is create a global movement, uh, driving these digital health solutions, solutions that are so compelling, they'll be adopted by patients and doctors and nurses and administrators. Systems are struggling to pay for the care they provide already. How are they going to afford the additional investment needed for digital transformation? I think the returns are so compelling. This is so obvious. So I, th I think how we do it is seeing is believing. We actually demonstrate the solutions at, at work and we can just, we, by deploying digital technologies, actually the overall spend on healthcare is actually going to go down. And by keeping people well, like we have a systemic problem in Europe, we're spending just 3% of the total Euro health spend in Europe on prevention and proactive healthcare and 97% on illness. But just by shifting that 3% to 7, 8%, people you know, are weller, they feel better, they're not going to the hospitals, they're going to the doctors less. We can actually detect using IoT devices very early onset of chronic disease. And chronic disease in the US, for example, is 90% of all cost. It's 70% of you know, all death. So this is something we can fix. So I think seeing is believing, showing these case studies, showing the technology real, showing actually how, you know, patients and consumers adopt it. We can do our banking online, we can do our shopping online, we have to be able to do healthcare online. Some very powerful IT companies are at this event. What can they do to get involved? Great, and we're so thrilled to have the tech companies here. But we're also, we also have med tech companies involved, companies like Medtronic, pharma companies like Roche and Novartis. And what this is going to take is a grand coalition. It needs everybody working together. So we have too many egos, too many silos. But if we have everybody working together um, towards this common vision of stay left, shift left 10x, we can move much faster. It's about alignment. It's about amplification. It's about acceleration. So having the tech guys at the table is a real vote of confidence. They see how digital has transformed you know, finance and music and retail. And they're here at the table saying, we want to help you to fix healthcare. And finally, Martin, how optimistic are you that we're going to turn this situation around in our lifetimes? We have no choice, we have to. You know, one of the messages I want to bring, Julian, is about hope. Uh, there is this pallor of despair across the industry, and, you know, recently Time was a nice Time article talking about doctors. It isn't, you know, overload of work that's causing them the problem. It's actually morale because they see no hope. The systems are failing. So we have to fix this because that means you and I and our friends and relatives and everybody out there are not going to get the care we need. And we need to get ahead of this. So we're detecting disease very early. You don't want to be diagnosed with something in A&E. We want to capture that in a pharmacy or a, you know, a GP surgery well in advance so you stay well and you, 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 you don't become a burden to the system. So we have no choice. Professor Martin Curley, thank you very much. Thank you, Julian.